The entire NFL is laughing at Matt Eberflus, yet the Chicago Bears refuse to do anything about it. Happy Monday morning, or I should say another disappointing Monday morning here on Chicago Bears Now. My name is Harrison Graham. If you want daily content, my authentic takes on everything surrounding this football team, hit that subscribe button right now. I would greatly appreciate it. Matt Eberflus is a laughing stock. The Bears are a laughing stock. Don't take my word for it. Take the rest of the NFL's word for it because week after week, loss after loss, teams continue to point out the obvious coaching errors that this team makes. And it starts with that man. And mostly it is due to that man because in big time spots, he doesn't know how to handle situations. Don't again, don't take my word for it. Take the Packers word for it. After the game, Kalen Kaler does a really good job, ESPN.com, senior writer. Went to the Packers locker room, asked some of the guys on the field goal block unit, hey, what happened on that play? What did you see? Well, a couple things. One, they said that Rich Passaccia, their special teams coordinator, uh, said throughout the week that we better get a field goal block because they have a clear weakness uh, in protecting field goals. So he was right about that right through the A-gap, slightly on the left side. Matt Pryor got pushed back. You could say maybe there should have been a leveraging call. Regardless, that's something they identified. Which, by the way, what did we see last week in the NFL? The Chiefs exploit the Broncos' weakness in protecting field goals on a certain position. So they stacked that spot and trucked the guy and blocked it. Shouldn't every field goal block unit in the NFL have seen that situation and gone over it ad nauseum during the week. Like, Hey, we are not going to let this happen to us. Well, not the bears, not the bears. Number two, they all said, all the players said they were surprised. The bears didn't try to get closer because with 36 seconds left in one timeout, the bears handed the ball off one time, got two yards, let 30 seconds come off the clock and settle for a 46 yard field goal. The Packers were surprised by that. They, they, they didn't believe they, they couldn't believe that Eberflus and the Bears decided to do that. Why not spike it real quick? Why not take a timeout? Try to run another player for two. It's okay to throw the ball. Now, if you throw the ball once or twice, incomplete, whatever, you don't get more yards, hey, no harm, no foul. Sure, is there a risk of a fumble, like Matt Eberflus said, or could your rookie quarterback make a mistake? Yeah, let him make the mistake. You're four and five. That, that's what this year is all about. And this is the problem with having a lame duck head coach because he's so scared because he knows if he keeps losing games, he's going to lose. That ironically, his decisions of being scared is losing him games. It, it, it's unbelievable watching this happen time and time again. And of course, this morning, Matt Eberflus doubled down on the decision to... Uh, to not uh, try to get more yards. Said he loved the operation there, trusted it. That was well within Santos's range. Well, yeah, it was within his range. But another thing the Packers identified, and anybody who's watched the Bears more than a game in the last three years, Santos kicks a low ball, especially on longer kicks, but really just in general, he kicks a low ball. And if you get closer maybe he can chip the ball a little bit higher. I'm not going to act like he's going to all of a sudden have a Brandon Aubrey leg and kick the ball to the moon. But instead of trying to drive the ball through the wind on a, not a super long, but a longer field goal, maybe he just chips it in, gets the sand wedge out. No, kicks the low ball and Carl Brooks tips it with his left middle finger, just enough to get it blocked. And Flus this morning on ESPN 1000. Love our decision-making there. Love the process. Just got to execute. Dude, do you have a clue? Do you have a freaking clue? And guess what? After this uh, word from our sponsor, this stat from the Bears' current kicker should infuriate you even more as to why they should have tried to get more yards for Cairo Santos. Today's episode is sponsored by Turtle Beach, the best gaming headsets and accessories out there. You won't be hearing Santa come down the chimney this Christmas Eve if you get Turtle Beach's new Stealth 700 gaming headset. Trust me, go check it out. Turtle Beach's Stealth 700 Gen 3 headset picks up so much crystal clear sound in the game that you're basically cheating. 
Santa could crash land right in your living room and you wouldn't even notice. And last time I checked, Santa's a pretty big fella. There's also no better way to block out Aunt Carol from asking you about your love life than with Turtle Beach's game-changing superhuman hearing technology. You'll hear every explosion, every loot box, every footstep, like they're right in the room with you. Or if you're a sporting gamer, you're going to hear every crowd noise, the commentating right into your headset. It's going to sound crystal clear whether you're treating yourself or looking for that perfect gift this holiday season now is the time to snag the headset that everyone is talking about for a limited time only our audience gets 10 percent off their entire tire order when you use code chat at turtlebeach.com that's code chat at turtlebeach.com 10 percent off your first order with code chat at turtlebeach.com slash chat Take advantage of this opportunity today. One more time, turtlebeach.com slash chat. Code chat gets you 10% off at checkout. Did you know that Cairo Santos inside of 40 yards has never missed as a bear? I've said this for years now. Inside 40, he's automatic. Now, could they still have blocked it? Yes, it's kind of like the Hail Mary. Sure, they could still complete the Hail Mary, even if you take a timeout and set up a different decision, blitz more, whatever, which, by the way, Jim Harbaugh last night, what did he do? Took his last time out, and Jesse Minter decided to dial up a blitz. Burrow had to get rid of it earlier than he wanted to. Ball gets knocked away. But, hey, you know, not trying to uh, rain on um, on, uh, on Matt Eberflus's, uh fake parade even more here. But you settle for a 46-yarder, which from 45-plus, Santos is 32 of 42, so pretty good, about 75%, 76%. Whereas inside 40, he's 100%. He's never missed, ever, since being the Bears kicker since 2020. He's not missed a kick. And with 30-plus seconds left in a timeout, you just don't even chase those yards. You know what that tells me? It's a lack of understanding. It's a lack of knowing your personnel. And sure, you know that 46 is well within Santos's range, but that's the next-level stuff. Oh, hey, inside 40, he never misses. Let's try and hit another six, eight-yard pass and use our last time out there or just go spike the ball. You have plenty of time to get tackled in bounds and spike the football with 30-plus seconds left. Like, if they wanted to just spam a timeout right after Roshan got two yards, you would have had about 31 seconds. From the 28-yard line to the end zone, there's no play where you get tackled in bounds where you can't get up there and clock the football. When you have north of 20 seconds, that is an eternity to get everybody lined up. And it's just like he was so afraid that someone was going to make a huge mistake that he's just like, "Eh, I'm just going to let 30 seconds run out and we're going to settle for this 46-yarder, even though our kicker is automatic from inside of 40 yards. It's just time and time again. We heard it in Washington. What does Matty Rufo say? Oh, those, uh, those, those 15 yards don't matter. Dan Quinn on the other side says, that, fi- that 13 yard completion is the only re- it's it saved us it gave us a lifeline it's the only way we even have a chance to complete that hail mary oh we didn't need a timeout our defense was set really tyreek stevenson's turned around yapping with the fans like he's just he doesn't get it he does not get it and oh let's just let's just pile on here because why not because i'm frustrated and i know some of you guys are like i'm tired of every video being bashing the coach and listen i I get it. I'm not going to try to have every video be about this coach sucks, but I'm not going to stop talking about it because it's the story of the Bears. The story of the Bears is Matt Eberflus is failing this team. How about this for another fun fact? He is now 5-17 and in one-score games since taking over as this team's head coach. It's worse than the NFL since 2022. Dead last. And if you want to say, well, the first year, okay. How many games in the last two years when they've at least had a competitive team have they just blown games, lost tight games? I mean, it's countless. I can't even remember them all. It's ridiculous how many one-score games this guy has lost and in the manner he's lost some of these games. The Cleveland game last year, third and 15, let's drop a defensive tackle into coverage. I mean, seriously? The Broncos game last year, your defense collapses. Detroit game in Detroit, defense collapses. Yesterday, defense is getting shredded. You decide to not go for it on a fourth and three. Then at the end of the game, you don't chase more yards despite your quarterback being special, putting you into position to even have a chance there. I mean, he's just, he's atrocious. He's an atrocious, atrocious coach. There's no way around it. 
There's no way around it. And even though he's a pretty decent defensive coach, against good teams, against good offensive minds and quarterbacks, you got to get shredded. I know the Packers only had 20 points yesterday. They failed to get a two-point conversion. They normally would have kicked there. It was just a normal flow of a game. And Jordan Love threw a horrible pick in the red zone. If he hits the guy in the chest, he turns and gets a first down. They probably score a couple plays later. He, he airmailed the guy by five yards. Like, you gave up 28 points yesterday if Love doesn't throw an awful pick. Like, some picks, it's like defense, great play. Some picks are like, uh, what was that throw? That It was the latter in that situation. You're, just, you're failing this quarterback. And, yes, Caleb has had his downs. The three games before this, he played terrible. But in one of those games against Washington, he nutted up in the fourth quarter, clutched up twice. Your OC slash head coach with that Doug Kramer call, uh, play call failed you. What does he do? Drives you down again, takes the lead with under 30 seconds to go. You can't seal the deal because of coaching incompetence. And then it happened again today, or on Sunday, excuse me. Coaching incompetence. Don't leave your offense on the field and try to take the game against Green Bay with about three and a half, four minutes left. It's just, it, it, it's insane. It's insane that he keeps doing this. Oh, let's not chase more yards. Your quarterback erases a third and 19 with the 16-yard dart to Roma Dunze. Back shoulder throw to Rome, maybe his throw of the season. Rookie to rookie, special moment there. And facing a seven-man blitz, identifies it, sets a max protection, gets rid of the ball early, hits Keenan on the out route with anticipation. And what does he do? He takes the ball out of Caleb's hands with over 30 seconds to go. And a timeout. It's just, say what you want about Caleb. He's been up and down. I understand it. I'm not acting like the guy's been perfect. He's been nowhere close to perfect. But you cannot dispute that he should have two signature wins on his resume already where he clutched up in the fourth quarter. One in Washington, and this one against the Packers, a team you've lost to now 11 times in a row. And your head coach, you could argue, is solely the reason for you not winning those two games. It's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. And forget just the individual moments this would mean for Caleb. You'd also be 6-4. and four. I'm not even talking about the Colts game where you can't stop the run even though Anthony Richardson can't complete a pass. I'm not even talking about the Patriots game where your team just rolls over against a garbage opponent. Like, forget those games. You'd be 6-4. and four. Your rookie quarterback would have two signature fourth quarter victories. But no, your head coach is a moron. Sorry, I'm not trying to be mean, but this is the reality of the situation. This head coach is, forget not being good enough, he's not good at all. He's not good at all. And it's, it, it's a slap in the face to season ticket holders, to the current players, to fans, really to the sport that you, conti you continue to trot this out. Like, it's one thing for me as a Bears content creator, a passionate uh, fan and person who follows this team and covers this team to say all this stuff. Every, every week on Get Up, First Take, all these The Herd, all these national shows, they're all saying how much of an embarrassment this coach is. And they won't get rid of him. It's, it's truly remarkable. It's truly remarkable. Now, the only thing that matters from here on out, because you're four and six, you're not making the playoffs, is Caleb Williams' development. And if you want to find a silver lining from Sunday, is Caleb was good. The offense was good. Now, you could sit there and say, he didn't even throw a touchdown. Yeah, If you watch that game, he was pretty damn good. He missed a couple throws, but... He was efficient. He got the ball out on time. When he needed to be special late, he was special. That's what you want your franchise quarterback to do. That is what you want your franchise quarterback to do. You could not have asked any more out of him yesterday. And Thomas Brown was good. So that's a positive development. He strung plays together nicely. I thought he utilized formations and personnel properly. More condensed formation, which creates more separation among receivers once they get out on their routes. A lot of just shallow cross underneath, get the ball out, stay ahead of the chains. I think they were nine of 16 on third down. They were, I feel like third and five and short a lot. Um, so that was good. Caleb pointed to Thomas getting the next play in like immediately as soon as the last play ended. I think that was an issue with Waldron. He was just taking too long to get to the next play. So that's a positive development, but still like it, it just feels like you've wasted this season. Now, the good news is, is, this doesn't feel like full Justin Fields 2021 where it's like, okay, this was really a waste because they gave him no reps in training camp. 
didn't even really want him to be the starter. Then they just thrusted him out there. At least the Bears have given him all the practice reps. He's uh, getting these game reps. And, you know, Thomas Brown at least feels competent. So maybe there's some value there in these next seven games, even though there's almost no chance he'll be the play caller next year. It'll be someone new. So I think there's at least some value to be had here. But it's still just ridiculous that they ran this thing back with Eberflus. I, I mean, it really is. And – I reported this last year, and I'm not going to act like a scoop guy, but we had a source in Jim Harbaugh's camp that said he was interested in the job. Now, maybe he would have taken the Chargers job anyway. It's There's probably a lot of truth to the fact that the Bears don't want to hire a guy like Jim Harbaugh. Fair enough. But that's a Bears issue, and I think if they would have thrown the kitchen sink at Harbaugh and said, we want you, I think there's a greater than 50-50 chance he would have been this team's head coach. And that's a tough pill to swallow because you ran it back with that Matt Eberflus. Like, what did you have to lose? Matt Eberflus? Like, if you if you don't get Harbaugh, just hire a different coach. <laughs> like, Matt Eberflus is not worth being worried about if you don't get the coach that you want. Like, like That's insane when you think about it. We had plenty of evidence before his failures this year that he was not a good enough head coach. Like, we, we've had that evidence. We had it last year. Like, even if you throw the first year out the window, last year, multiple colossal failures. That's been well documented. And they didn't even sniff around on Harbaugh because you didn't want to lose Matt Eberflus? That's pretty, that's pretty shameful, if we're being completely honest. All right, that's it for my Monday morning rant. We'll be back live this afternoon around 4 o'clock Central Time. So subscribe and join us. And, hey, get it trending. I'm seeing people on social media do it. Comments, Twitter, Instagram, everywhere. Get the fire fluces going, the hashtags going. And, again, it's not fun calling for a man's job. I'm more calling for the Bears to do the smart thing. And, unfortunately, for Matt Eberflus, that's to get rid of him. But I think it's safe to say they're not going to fire him midseason. But doesn't mean uh, we should just uh, continue, just accept that and uh, watch these seven games play out. So uh, hashtag fire flus, get it trending in the comments on social media, etc. My name is Harrison Graham. We'll see you guys in a few hours. Mm-hmm.